Hey guys, welcome to Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. I decided that I might as well get this one moving. I've uh, been kind of feeling like playing this one lately, so eventually. There we go. Controller didn't want to work for a moment. Let's start a new game. This is probably my favorite from the uh, the main series. Uh, I don't know, it, it was also the first Final Fantasy I played, so maybe part of that comes down to nostalgia. But I really, really enjoy this game for a lot of different reasons. And yes, I know there are a lot of issues with this game. You know, it's overhyped, but that does not take away from what it actually is. Um, there's a lot of spelling errors and grammatical errors and translation errors in this game that doesn't really hurt your ability to play the game and when I notice them I'll point them out but half the time because I've played this game so many times I just kind of look at them and see what I need to see I don't always notice that they're there but yeah this is the uh, the first game on the PlayStation first Final Fantasy game on the PlayStation anyway and we finally have CG rendered uh, graphics for the first time in the series and apparently this is in steampunk-ish time which is also well it's kinda like uh, Final Fantasy 6 in that sense similar time frame I would think I think this this game's probably a couple hundred years ahead using our own timeline as a guide yeah, uh, started playing this, uh, well, probably a little while after it came out, because uh, it was with my PlayStation that I, my, when I first got it, that I got this game. But yeah, we start with some really massive city and a train sequence. Yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Final Fantasy XIII, and when I watched the opening, say, hour or so, I just looked at it, I was like, why am I playing Final Fantasy VII without the joy of being able to play Final Fantasy VII? I still haven't made up my mind whether I like the game or not. I'm only, I don't know, 10, 12 hours into the game at this point, so... I won't be talking about it in this game, so... Anyway, we have control over our character, and the first thing we want to do is pick up a potion from this guy, hit the menu, and let's see, I'm going to, no, I'm going to leave that at that for now. Battle speed, crank this all the way up at the start of the game, but eventually we'll want to turn it down because of, well, well, we'll get into that more many, many hours into the game. And these guys run at us. And this is our first battle. Not too complicated. At this point, you might as well just use your normal attack. You do have a couple of magic spells. That's critical. Yeah, but if you don't turn the battle speed up, it is so slow at this point because your speed stat is just abhorrent. Anyway, we level up our main character, which is X soldier not really the best name in the world. But yeah, we have both an Ice and a Bolt spell. Nothing too much. Uh, we won't be making use of the Ice spell very much. Here's our basic equipment. Some bronze gear, Buster Sword, no accessories. Here's an... Uh, well, it's not really a new feature, but you actually get to have an influence on it in this game. There technically are limit breaks in Final Fantasy VI, and I think that was the first game they had it into. Basically, the way it worked in that game is if you were at low enough health and used a normal attack, you had a chance of using a different attack, some kind of a limit thing. In this case, you have the limit gauge that builds up as you take damage, and the more damage you take, the more it builds up. Once it builds up to max, you can use your limit in place of a normal attack. But, unlike Final Fantasy um, IX, you can't or you can actually save that um, that limit and not use that wasted off in a random battle when your enemies are almost dead. But we'll get into that a little more later because you, even though you don't have to use it in 
random metal, you will want to. That's how you gain more of them. But like I said, we'll get into that when I finally learn another one, and then I'll explain how it goes. Used to be in Soldier. Well, what's Soldier? Well, they don't really mention it right off the bat. It takes them forever, so I'll just uh, tell you now. It's uh, basically a group of soldiers. Not like that was hard to figure, but basically they're the elite fighting force of... Uh, I don't think they even mentioned who are fighting yet. I'll wait till they do that. Didn't catch your name. And I'm a puffy cloud. Yay. I don't know why, but then they, they move on to Final Fantasy VIII and you have Squall, which is a type of rainstorm, if I remember correctly. Rain, windstorm, something like that. We have two characters in a row named after weather phenomenon. Yay. And then, of course, it happens in Final Fantasy XIII as well. And our character is establishing right off the bat that he is the anti-hero and not the hero. Ah, never move as a group. Target is the North Mako Reactor. And yes, I know the correct pronunciation from the Japanese is Mako, but it just doesn't sound right to me, and I always thought it was Mako growing up because I didn't have the, uh, the Japanese pronunciation training at that time. Anyway, this, I guess, is like the industrial district surrounding it, surrounding this Mako Reactor. And we get to name another character, Barrett. I think this is the first time we've had a lead character, lead party member. I'm not like in this spoiler, we named him. Uh, he's telling you that you can hold the X button and move to run instead of walk. But I think this is the first time we've had a character um, that was a main character that has been black, which seems kind of weird, but I think technically Leo from Final Fantasy VI is black, or at least his portrait looks black sometimes, but, you know, sometimes it does, and then if you see him in battle, he looks, his sprite looks white, which is kind of weird. Either way, Leo's not a main character in that game, even though he's pertinent to the story. He's not one of your, your main, you have 12 characters in that game, 16, something like that, 14, I don't know. It's been a long time since I've played that game. I actually considered uh, playing it um, recently, but uh, as of recording this video, I haven't. Anyway, Wedge here is going to uh, secure the escape passage. Well, here's Wedge, and if you remember before, the other characters um, that we've seen so far have been Jesse and... Nah, well, you're not going to get to talk to him, but Biggs. Biggs and Wedge is obviously the Star Wars reference, and Jesse is here for to add a female to the group, I guess. First time. Ah, uh, yes, and that, I was saying they'd get to it eventually. Soldier is the fighting force for the Shinra. And if you've played Final Fantasy X, yes, there is a tie-in. No, I'm not going to talk about it. Yes, it's stupid, and we move on. Alright, so the basic concept of this Mako energy that these reactors are sucking out of the planet is very similar to electricity, but more so instead of uh, just feeding on, like, you know, poisoning the planet like our current uh, power plants seem to do, these ones are drawing out the life essence of the planet as well. Oh, so Barrett's going to tag along with us so we don't pull anything. Anyway. Yeah, okay. And, of course, here's Biggs. And the one standing next to the door is always the one with the code. You know, here's something that I probably played this game eight times before I even knew was there was a passage down here. There's a passage down here. I don't know why, but I always just ran right by it without paying any attention. But down here we can get a phoenix. Bay. Yay! Alright, Jesse's got another code here to open up the elevator. And in order to do anything, we've got to hit the button over here. 
and it's time for a little uh, meeting, I guess. Basically, Barrett is going to be the environmentalist of the group. Drain out all the life. Okay. Yeah, well, it kind of is, or it shall be eventually. And that's always the argument from a lot of environmentalists, that it is everyone's problem. And, and it's, it's correct. It definitely is everyone's problem. It's just hard for a lot of people to see, including myself at times, um, the impact that it's going to have on you most uh, at the current time. Finishing the job before RoboGuard's coming. Hmm, I wonder if that's going to uh, imply something's going to happen later. Now, this game is a lot more um, well-known than Final Fantasy IX. But, and, you know, I said at the start of the Final Fantasy IX Let's Play that I was deciding not to go into spoilers because I thought, you know, not as many people had played it. And then I referenced Final Fantasy VII as something that everyone had played, so I should probably go into spoilers in this one. But I found it's probably easier from a commentary perspective to come up with different things to talk about if there aren't spoilers. That's not to say that there will be no spoilers. I'm going to say for the most part there won't be. But if I'm going to spoil something, I will definitely give you a warning ahead of time so that, you know, if you don't want to be having anything spoiled for you, you won't have to. And we have some more new enemies. At this point, there's not a lot that we can deal with. Barrett, having a gun, is a long-range guy, so we're going to have him attack the one on the back row. Still deal full damage, and then Cloud can finish off the one in the front there. What I did there to have that little bar at the bottom to show names of enemies is the select button, and that basically just shows what you're doing with your actions using magic or attacks, and it also shows enemy names as well. Because when I normally play this game, I never put it on from the first time I played it and to now, really. I've never really used it because I don't find any point. I have no idea what most of the enemies' names are in this game. Anyway, yeah, she just tells you how to use a ladder, which should be pretty obvious if you've played any JRPGs by now. But, oh well. Anyway, there's not a lot to do in this first dungeon. It's relatively straightforward. I'm not going to edit out any battles because there's different enemies that you can run into. Alright, let's have Barrett attack the one in the back row. I think Barrett won't do enough damage to take up the ones in the front row there. If you guys post in comments that you want me to have that little select bar, that one, up, I will put it up. I know I don't like it, but uh, that's entirely up to you. For now, I'm just going to leave it off because it doesn't really show much extra information. Anyway, this guy is weak to lightning, considering it's a machine, so you might as well make use of uh, our bolt spell here. That's a lot of damage. There we go. So yeah, there are enemies with elemental weaknesses in this game, and they will be useful to exploit. But there's a lot of points where there's... At one point, we get a wind-based uh, materia, which is how you use magic in this game. And I've found that that's really useless to use. I'm just going to run into one more battle so that I can get a little bit more experience and then go fight the boss. But, uh, so, there's a lot of enemies, or a few enemies that are weak to win, but I don't find there's any reason to. And if you see what I did there, there's a back attack, and if you hit the L and R buttons to run away, you uh, will try and run away and then turn around so you won't get back attack and so it won't do as much damage and obviously because we're both in the front row normally Cloud is dealing half damage because as a back attack we are now both in the back row. And even though Barrett has a long range weapon I'm not going to put him in the back row 
because I want him to take more damage because that influences the growth of his limits. His limit breaks. So we're going to be able to use probably both of them on the boss. So I'm just going to... Oops. Let's see. Item, potion. You can have one and I'll use another one later if I need to during the boss fight. Anyway, let's go on and blow the reactor. You think there's going to be a boss fight if we blow up the reactor? Hmm. Ah, and what do we found here? The restore materia, which, as you can notice, there's an empty spot here. This will be materia, but we don't know how to use it yet. Well, Barrett doesn't know how to use it yet. <laughs> More than a hunk of junk. Oh, so he doesn't trust us, but he trusts us to set a bomb. Really, Barrett? You've got problems, buddy. Well, what's going on here? Watch out. It isn't just a reactor. Well, no. Um, you know what? I don't remember if that's ever really explained. I, I, kn I kind of have an idea who's talking to him. But I don't know what that means that's not just a reactor. Because as far as I remember, I think it just is a reactor. But, oh well. Apparently our hero is a little screwed up in the head. And we set off the alarm. Great. Here they come. And it's time for the first boss fight of the game. And this is the scorpion... Guard Scorpion. Anyway, in this fight, we are going to have Barret physically attack, and Cloud's going to use Bolt the whole time. Since there's nothing else we can really do. And this guy has a lot more defense, both magic and physical, than normal enemies. Another thing to note is when you get your limit, watch my bar there, it's sped up. Your time gauge, your ATB gauge, once you get your limit, you will almost instantly get your next turn, basically, so that you can use it right away. I'm going to use it now and then heal next time on my next round with Barret. But, uh, yeah, you, you can choose to make use of it. Like, if you already have, if you already have your gauge filled up and then you get a limit break, you can use the limit break and or no wait not you can't use the limit break I don't think but if you use a different action say you cast a spell or use an item then the next time you run your time gauge goes through it should go really fast so that you can use your um, your limit break right away afterward anyway uh, I don't need to do it. that's useful he uses this uh, search scope attack to basically scan your party members and lock on. I don't really know why, but oh well. Uh oh. Oh no. Yeah, here. Cloud's gonna get a limit, I think. Alright. Let's hit him. This is braver. It's basically a big shot. <laughs> Kinda like Barrett's. It's just a stronger attack at this point. Now, at this point, we enter a nice mistranslation. Be careful. Attack while it's tails up. No. Do not attack while it's tails up, or it will counterattack, as they were kind of trying to explain. So this is the point where you just kind of use your potions or heal, something like that. I'm healed enough. Once he drops his tail down, then we can continue attacking him without fear of massive counterattacks. What he'll counterattack with is a laser beam that hits both party members for about 50 to 70 damage, if I remember right. So you you don't want to do that. Not at this point. You don't have a reliable way of healing. So it's not, even though it'll build up your limits a little faster, you don't really need them for this fight. So there we go. Not too tough. Anyway. That boss is down, we both level up, and we get an assault gun, which is a new weapon for Barret. Ah, huh, so it's time to get out of here. And apparently, the timer on the bomb doesn't start until after the boss fight. At least that's nice. Oops, no, it doesn't make a lot of sense. 
Anyway, we can now equip that assault gun on to Ferret. Now he can deal some more damage. But that's all the time we've got for this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy VII. Uh, not helping. Next time we will uh, try and escape here with our nice uh, timer that's going on there. Don't worry about the timer. You should be able to get out of here as you saw me run in in three, four minutes tops. So I wouldn't bother running from battle, but I'll probably start editing them out in the next episode since uh, it's pretty much uh, established. I think we've seen all the enemies in here by now. But anyway, that's all for this episode, and I'll see you guys next time.